Success dance. Yeah. Welcome to the writer's journey. I'm your host, Lauren Moore, and with me is the simply amazing Kayleen Williams. We're two authors on a journey to learn more about writing with you, the audience. Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we're talking about BookFunnel, an online tool that enables authors and publishers to distribute ebooks directly to their readers. Our guest is the creator and CEO of BookFunnel. He has self published a fantasy trilogy and is currently working on a new space opera series. As a lifelong software engineer, Damon Courtney is an expert in just about everything technical and can offer unique insight on publishing as it relates to software and technology. Our lives as authors cannot survive in this new publishing world without software, so that makes Damon feel pretty important. Also with us are two indie authors who are active in the writing community, Julia V and Kevin McLaughlin. Julia writes military science fiction and space opera, and with her co-writer Ken Babel, has published the Cold War series. Kevin is the USA Today best-selling author of the Blackwell Magic fantasy series, Accord Science Fiction series, Valhalla Online Lit RPG series, and the fan favorite Starship Sakori series, which is ongoing. We're super excited to have Dame and Julia and Kevin on the show tonight. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Hey! Hey! Golf clap of awesome. Golf we made awesome. it, and you're all in your own little worlds. You're you're sheltering in place, staying safe. Everyone's good. <laughs> we, we are all sheltering, hunkering at home. Like it's yeah. not totally unnormal, right? Unnormal, <laughs> yes. And uh, in the chat, we have also sheltering in place and staying safe. Rick, Walt, Jay, Jay's already took taken off his pants. Apparently. Hi, oh God. Getting comfy. Getting comfy. <laughs> Hi, Got to make the best of this, people. And Bill. Bill was the first in chat. So, golf clap. Yay. Go, Bill. You rock, Bill. You're amazing. All right. So, I thought we could just kind of go around the circle, introduce yourself, um, what you write, what you're curious about book funnel, and your quarantine drink of choice. Mine is a gin and tonic because... Uh, quinine. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, why don't you turn us off? Okay. Uh, I'm Kevin McLaughlin. Uh, I've written 50 uh, something books and it keeps on going up, so I'm losing track from time to time. Um, and I've uh, been doing this full time now for about three years. And uh, my drink of, of choice right now is, is Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Hi, everybody. I, yes, go ahead. Okay, well, we're not really a circle. We're more like a pentagram, but um, I'm yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> we'll just start so, out. It'll work. Yeah, Kevin is my hero. He uh, was very inspiring when we hung out together in Colorado Springs. Uh, he told me about his time when he still had a day job, and he still used to crank out all his words, so that's pretty heroic. Um, presently, I feel like I am a short order chef and a homeschooling <laughs> teacher on top of my regular day job. So I've hit the wine early. I'm on the West Coast in California and it's it's only six o'clock and I've dug into my wine stash already. Yeah, no, see, it's, it's you know, it's 530 somewhere. So you're already like well into smooth sailing. Yeah, so here, Burned it. Here, here in Texas, the uh, the governor has suspended a law that does not allow restaurants to sell alcohol for carryout, right? So you're not, that's not a thing you can do, but they have suspended that law. And so now all of the places around us are selling alcohol to go, including the, <laughs> including the Mexican joint up the plate, up, up the street, which is selling margaritas by the gallon. So <laughs> that could never go wrong. Right. So my wife and I stop by there, grab a gallon of margaritas on the way home. And, you know, but currently my drink of choice is just water because uh, I, I like to keep my, my the pipes lubricated in case I need to sink. Uh, I am. I'm Damon. Wait, we, can demand, yeah. we can demand Damon just singing. That's what I heard too. We can I, I, I heard a sing along, <laughs> uh, sing out. So that's going to have to happen. If you right. if you catch me at a conference and there's karaoke, you will almost for sure find me there. Um, I know, guys. We will have karaoke, but after we end the broadcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just after kidding. broadcast ends. So I am Damon, and most of my days I write book funnel. I write all the code for book funnel. 
Uh, but I'm also a, a self-published fantasy author. I'm working on a sci-fi series. And then uh, I, I still read. I'm a lifelong reader and lover of sci-fi and fantasy. So I still read sci-fi fantasy all the time. And it's still the, the, my, my genre of choice. My drink of choice right now, as I said, is water. But it's very geeky water. I don't know. You can't really see it. But my, uh, my, this, is a, That's awesome. our, this is awesome. This is my wife made this for me for, for Christmas. Actually, maybe this was a Father's Day gift. Um, oh, the Christmas. It says Carpe DM. Yeah, DM as in Dungeon Master. And then uh, my shirt says Uncle Iroh's Tea Shop, uh, which is oh, a is a, is Avatar. one that she made for me. Yes, Avatar: The Last Airbender. We're big uh, we're big fanboys of Avatar. So um, yeah, I spend most of my days writing books on all these days. That's awesome. And you're apparently the whole. Like if, if you have any questions, if you have any needs with Book Funnel, you're the guy we talk to. You're the one who fixes it. You're the genie in the bottle. I am the, I'm probably not the guy that you'll talk to. We have support people that answer all the emails incoming, but I am the guy who's going to fix it if, if something mm -hmm. is broken. Yes. Yeah. So if you all want a question answered now from, you know, it's the term, I can't help it. The horse's mouth. Now's yeah. the time. <laughs> I am, I am the guy ultimately. Like we like to say that we'll, you know, if my support people will usually say, you know, oh, I'll have to ask engineering about, I, I, I'm engineering, that's, that's me. But it makes it sound like, you know, oh, well, you know, I have to talk to engineering about that. And then it's just like, hey D, can we fix that? What, what is, what, something's broken. <laughs> well, if you want to make them feel amazing, you say, I will contact the CEO and let them know about your concern. That's right. Take it all the way to the top. That's right. I'm going to elevate this all the way to the top right now. You should have interchanging hats and you just yeah. like pull out the next hat. All right. So I heard from. <laughs> all right. So very quickly, uh, right now I am drinking what I always drink during the show. But lately, uh, when I'm not on the show, I've been drinking whiskey ginger ales because they're delicious and the liquor stores are still open. And isn't ginger ale good for you, Kevin? Can you it just is awesome for you. <clears throat> it helps all sorts of things. And it's delicious. Uh, sure. I'm not ginger. sure what you add whiskey to it. I don't, I'm not sure what that worked out for me. But. Ginger and the ginger ale. Ginger is the root, so it's basically a salad in a drink. If, uh, if there's actually, actually ginger, ginger, right? That's like, you know, if there's actually. If there's actually ginger in it, then it might actually have some effect, but most ginger ale doesn't actually have any ginger in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like putting lettuce on a taco. You're like, oh, it's so healthy. Yeah, it's a little bit. You've got a vegetable. See, it's lettuce. <laughs> it's still delicious, and I'm still drinking it. All right. <laughs> totally. We wanna, so we're watching questions over here in the chat. Should we just answer them as they come up, or do I let you guys lead? We'll do a little intro about what Book Funnel is. If you could just introduce that to our audience, what Book Funnel is, how authors can use it, what's it all about, quick intro, go. Shoot. Uh, so the, the quickest way is that, well, I used to say it's, it's an ebook delivery service, but now we do audio too. But really the, the idea is that Book Funnel, I talk with my hands a lot and I'm trying to put them down because uh, I'm on video. But the, um, the, 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 the main thing to think about when you think about Book Funnel is that uh, anywhere you might want to deliver a book outside of the traditional store system is where Book Funnel comes in. So, you know, you, you've got your books published. They're up on Amazon. They're up on Kobo. They're on Barnes & Noble. Wherever you've got them published in the world, you're talking about audio, you've got them up on Audible. But there are places that you might want to send out a book that live outside of that world, and that's where Book Funnel comes in. And there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways, and I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit more as, the, as we go on. But you know, anything that you can think of, like, oh, I just want to send a free short story to my newsletter, to my super fans, and say, hey, I wrote this story. It's cool. And you wouldn't want to put that up on all the bookstores and charge them. Maybe you just want to, hey, I just want to kind of kick it out the door and give it to you guys. That's where Book Funnel comes in. Um, and now we do audio as well. The question that came out of the chat was how many folks use Book Funnel to send out RPG material? Um, we actually have uh, some of them that do it. Uh, Chris Fox. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's, he writes a series called the Magitech Chronicles, and he just finished up a really big Kickstarter for um, the RPG of the Magitech Chronicles that he's been working really, really hard on. And yeah, he's sending out all of the, the digital content through us. Maybe not all of it, but I know that the actual manual, the it's the player's handbook. I don't know what he calls it, but in my world, it would be the player's handbook. Uh, is is going out through through book funnel. So we do have people that use us for uh, sending out RPG material and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. We we get used for a lot of stuff that was never the intention when I built 
you know, book funnel. So it's always exciting to see the way that indie authors are out there changing things and doing new creative things. So basically, if you have a document, a digital document, you can send it out through book funnel. Uh, right now we don't do uh, PDFs are the only thing that we do that would be considered a document. And that's what you would do with like RPG materials. So if you were sending out a character sheet, um, you know, like spy, international spy thriller authors like to send out dossiers of their, of their spies mm -hmm. and things like that. All of that stuff can be done through PDFs. It's not really, you know, it's not a true ebook. You wouldn't want to send out a, an EPUB of a dossier or something like that. You'd want to send something out that looks, uh, Mark Dawson actually sends out a dossier of his, uh, John Milton character that has like he he went through and he marked it out with a marker like redacted sections of yes. it and then, he, and then he re scanned it so it looks like it's old and it's gone through several fax machines it's really really cool but it's so it's so cheesy when you know what he did but I used to do that stuff when I would when I would play D and D I would you know I would take my paper and I would soak it in tea so that it looked like yes. stained parchment and crap like that. It's the, it's the modern equivalent of just, you know, playing role playing games. He's out there just writing characters. What are the steps an author would take in going from never having used book funnel to actually getting a book to their reader? Um, so uh, one of the big things that a lot of authors do is, you know, the reason I built book funnel initially was for authors who were trying to build their newsletter up that were just trying to get their mailing list off the ground. And most of the time that you're doing that, you want to offer them a cookie. You want to give the reader something in exchange for signing up. Uh, in the early days, you could just say, hey, give me your email address and I'll let you know when I have a new book and people would sign up for it. But then as people got spammed with all of that stuff, it became a little bit more of, well, what's in it for me? And so uh, you can give out a free short story. You could give out a novella. If you have a long running series, even giving the first book in the series can work really, really well. Um, and Generally, so once you're set up through BookFunnel, once you have an account, you upload the book, which is really just as simply as dragging and dropping the files on and then telling us the title of the book, the author of the book, and then giving us a little the book description. Once you have the book up there, it depends on what you want to do. If you're setting up your newsletter, you would probably set up a page. You can either set up a landing page through us where we will collect the readers for you, and then either you can export them and send them on or we would automatically export them and send them on to your mailing list, or you would do that collection yourself. You, you could set it up so that you control the landing page, you're doing the email collection, and then in the welcome email, you send a what we call a download page, which is just a straight, it doesn't do any email collection, it just says, here's the, the book, click here to download it and go. So in your welcome email to your, to your list, you would say, hey, thanks for joining, I'm super excited to have you here, I hope you love my books, here, you know, click here to get your free copy of X. And either one of those ways really works fine with us. The, the original way that we built BookFunnel, we didn't even do email collection. The, the download page was the only thing that we did when we started um, four and a half years ago. So the, the landing pages now, what's really nice about that is if you're just getting started as an author and you don't want to build out your own website and do all of that, if you're not quite ready to take that leap yet, we can manage that just having a nice pretty landing page for you that you can then still send out to people as a way to get new readers subscribed to your list. You know, that's a really good point um, on our, la I think it was our last episode, you know, we were talking about the steps of, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, and, you know, having that website, you know, that could definitely be something with book funnel you can hold off on if you don't want to pay for, um, just lost what it's called, the domain <laughs> name. Yeah. yeah, if you don't want to pay for the domain name or you don't quite understand how to work through the web pages, you know, book funnel kind of be a a soft pad before you so you can put it off. So yeah, that's cool. That's all I have to say. Do you need to have a newsletter or can you operate this from like a Facebook group for your readers, for example? You could collect I mean you could certainly build up a Facebook group. I, we really don't recommend that people <sighs> If you want to build a Facebook group, I think that's just fine. There are a lot of people on Facebook that you can do that with. But uh, we tell people that, that even if you're building a Facebook group, even if you were building a Twitter following uh, or getting people to follow you on Instagram or any place else that you want to do that sort of stuff, you still should be building your own newsletter. And the biggest reason for that is that if you don't own the direct line of communication with those readers, then someone else owns your readers for you. Facebook famously, you know, many, many years ago, took away your ability to just send to everybody that followed your page. You used to be able to just 
write out a post and it would go to everybody on your page. And then they said, okay, well now we only send it to 10% of the people that are on your page. And if you want to send, you want to boost your post, a sweet 25 bucks will get us to send it to everybody, right? Now Facebook owns your relationship. You know that you have, you know, 800 people that follow your page. You have no way to communicate with them other than through Facebook. So we tell people that building a Facebook group is great. And it's actually, if you want more direct communication, like on a regular basis with your readers, if you want to get in there and just chat and kind of post things and have that immediate feedback, that's absolutely the way to do it would be to build out a Facebook group. But even while you're doing that, you still should be working on building your own newsletter so that no one will ever own your line of communication to your readers. You know, as, as indies, we now have more than any time, other time in the world, indie authors can and should talk directly to their readers. I mean, I grew up, I, I imagine every author here was a reader growing up, probably has been a, a really voracious reader. And I grew up reading all of these amazing authors, never talked to one of them. Never, never even, never even considered the idea that I might, right? Like, you mean, like, there, you know, you know, you might love an author so much that you'd sit down and write a letter, and sometimes they would do that. You did? (laughs) I did. I have to, yeah. And so, yeah, I I mean, I feel so old just saying that I wrote a pen and paper letter to my favorite author, and I squealed with joy when I got a piece of mail back. Like, honest to God, mail. you couldn't get that poster of Corey Haim unless you wrote to him in Tiger Beat. So and I, I had that poster <laughs> on my wall. You, but now that you really think about it, I can go, those authors that I grew up reading, I mean, the ones that are still alive, I can go and follow them on Twitter. I can talk directly to them now. That's not something that we ever, ever had before. And authors, indie authors especially, need to take advantage of that. In, in the traditional publishing world, even... You know, much more so it used to be, but a little bit even now, um, your your publisher is doing some of that work for you, and and some readers are finding you because they already know that publisher. If you publish a book through Tor, Tor has their own list and their own people that they're going to send that out to, so they're going to get a little bit of traction for you. But uh, and now, like every book that I buy from Tor, they have a sign up in it for Tor's newsletter, right? They're not trying right. to. They're not trying to get people on an author newsletter. They are trying to build Tor's newsletter. And you as the indie, you are the publisher. You should be trying to build that newsletter. If it's if all the big publishers, I mean, it's it, it seems comical how long it took the, tr- the trad pubbers to get into this. Like, we should have people signing up for a newsletter. Like, really, guys, you just figured that one out? Because the indies were on that a decade ago. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, you've got a really fantastic... Um, newsletter and website and all that. What do you think about this idea of authors kind of owning their own space and owning their own audience? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, I think it's essential, really. Uh, there's no guarantee that Facebook won't decide. And, you know, we, we don't like these groups. We're seeing too many people advertising to folks through groups instead of paying us for ads. So, you know, now groups are going away or maybe groups start costing, you know, like, a uh, hundred dollars a month scaling up from there based on how many people are in the group or something who knows it, th- i'm not saying they're going to do these things i'm saying that this isn't in our control but our email list is i've got fifteen thousand people subscribed to my email list who um amazing. yeah i've been working at it for a long time Damon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it does it takes a lot of effort but it's it's worth it right Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, my my books routinely pop into the top thousand or two thousand when I launch them, and uh, that's largely because of the email list. Um, you know, it, it's a very very powerful tool, and it's not that expensive. Um, it, 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 I would say it's probably the most important element of my marketing program. It just takes time, right, and nurturing. Yeah, it definitely does. I How think, frequently do you send out your newsletter, Kevin? Um, I'm, I've actually been remiss for the last little bit. I'm behind. Um, so, uh, but usually I try to go like twice a month or so. See, and that's also something I've heard a lot. Um, if you want to do twice a month, you want to do once a week, if you want to do every three months, whatever it is, you're training your readers to know when to expect your newsletter. So mm-hmm. what you in your world can conceivably do you know, that's what you should start training your readers now. You know, that welcome email, hey, I send out um, a newsletter every X amount of time. 
on occasion, I might have something special for you that will fall outside those lines so that that at least that way, you know, if you sent one one week and then a week later you send another one, they're not like, why are they bombarding me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking Train of your readers. special, uh, Damon, last time we were in, in Colorado, you were talking about sending audio through BookFunnel. Yeah. And I was just wondering how that works. Um, so we... So the, the the week after we opened our doors, we got two feature requests that have been bombarded, have been thrown at us every week since then. The first was direct sales, which we finally built a couple years ago, and audiobooks. Uh, and what's crazy is that it's it's four years ago, four and a half years ago when we first launched Book Funnel, audiobooks weren't even nearly as big as they are now. Now they've blown up like crazy, and we were still getting requests almost weekly for audiobooks. But the response was always the same, sort of like, well, delivering audiobooks is, is a very different beast than delivering ebooks. And so we, we kind of held off on it. We wanted to do it, but it's a much bigger piece. It's almost like building a second book funnel. So we, were, we kept holding off, we kept holding off. And then um, I would, anytime I'm at conferences, anytime I do one of these things, I tell people that, you know, if you want a feature, you should email us. Because even though, I mean, we're not going to immediately jump and just be like, yes, that's an amazing feature. Although it has <laughs> happened. Um, oftentimes what we do is we track these features. and like, wow, we got a lot of people that were asking for, you know, Cindy integration. So we said, okay, great. We'll build Cindy integration. Audio, um, audio books were always on our future looking list. Like, yes, that's something we definitely want to do when we have the time and the, and the resources to build it. Um, but in, in the span of about a week, we had six different requests from different authors and groups of authors all asking for the same thing, which was short form audio. We had a group of children's books authors who contacted us and said, hey, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a there's a trend among children's books authors where they are reading their own books and which are like two, three, four minutes long. I mean, children's books, they don't take very long. And they're not getting narrators, they're reading it themselves. It's not a big, massive production, it's more like a bedtime story. And they're using that little chunk of audio as their lead magnet to get people onto their newsletter. Because if you have a children's book, what are you, what are you supposed to give as the, as the lead magnet? Right, right. right. Yeah. Here it is, here's, you know, and they was like, as read by the author in their own voice, you know, hear the book in the author's own voice sort of thing. And they said, you know, hey, there's a lot of children's book authors that are doing this now. And all of them are basically handing out Dropbox links with an MP3. And as soon as I hear Dropbox links, my little you know <laughs> engineer antenna pops up and says, "Wait a minute, that's a terrible way to deliver stuff." So we said, "Okay, that's cool." And then we were contacted by a group of romance authors who said, "Hey, we're currently doing a serial where every week we're dropping a new episode. Like they all pooled their money together to hire a narrator, and they've been recording these weekly serialized fiction." And currently, we're all sending them out with just MP3s and a Dropbox link. Oh, hmm. uh, we and then oh, we had an author who said, you know, can you can I put up a sample of my audio book when I send people through to my Audible page? My sample on Audible is like five minutes long, and it doesn't. I've had people complain that they can't tell anything about the book in the first five minutes of it. And I know that my wife is a big audio book listener. I I still do eBooks. I can't make that transition. I, I just like reading the words. So, uh, but she's, she's gone all in on audio and uh, I, I can hear her sometimes just, you know, cursing from the other room. It's like, what? She goes, listen to this sample. And it's like, you know, credits, you know, blah, 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 you know, dedication to my wife, Jenny. Thank you so much. I would never read this book without you. <laughs> Chapter one. Thank you for listening to this sample on Audible. Like, like, they don't even get the word one of the book before the sample's over. And so we thought, you know, oh, it would be really cool if authors could just kind of build their own sample and then, you know, hey, after you listen to the sample, jump over to Audible to finish the rest of the book. And I thought that was brilliant because for me, I would want, I mean, I haven't done any audiobooks yet, but if I were doing them, I would want control over where that sample ends. More specifically, I want to end at the end of a gut punch cliffhanger on chapter four so that Absolutely. boom, <laughs> that, boom, you're going to buy that book. And so we set out, we'd always thought audiobooks were a more distant thing, but suddenly we were like, wait a minute, that's a single MP3 is not that different than delivering an ebook. We can totally do that. So we built that audio feature. So now BookFunnel delivers audio up to two hours of content, which 
It's about nine, it's about 9,000 and change words per, per finished hour. So you can do about 18,000 words uh, in a, in, you know, that's a really good novella length. And now we have authors that are, we have children's books authors that read their own books. We have authors that are just doing massive two hour samples. I mean, of an eight hour book, so a 25% sample. But I mean, if you get 25% of the way into a book, are you, yeah, you're not finished. You're right. going to buy it. If yeah. you made it that far and you haven't turned it off yet, you're probably going to go buy it much more than you would if you had a five minute sample. Um, and so we have a lot. We have thousands of pieces of audio fiction and nonfiction now that are up that are being distributed through BookFunnel. Well, you could combine Patreon and BookFunnel mm -hmm. as an author, like read your own chapters, chapter by chapter, and then put that out to Patreon subscribers, you know, via BookFunnel. Yeah, and we have a we have a direct integration with Patreon too, so that when you when you put your content out there, you can create what we call a restricted page through BookFunnel that is restricted to your Patreon. And it, and when you send the link out, if they share it with somebody else, that they actually have to type in their Patreon email and log in through Patreon to verify that not only are they a patron of yours, but that they're following you at a particular reward level. And so you can say, oh, this one only goes out to my gold members. And so you send out right. the link, but if they were to pass that link on to somebody else, BookFunnel will, will validate that they are who they say they are, that they are on your Patreon. And if they're if they're not on your Patreon, we put up a nice little message that says, hey, you're not currently a patron of Lauren Moore, but if you start following her, you can get this content right now. And if they are a patron, but they're not following you at the high enough level, we send them to a link that lets them upgrade their reward level so that then they can come back and get this nice little piece of content. See that That's that really right there cool. is really really awesome because I know like a lot of authors they want to give enough so people can come and buy their things, but it's like what's the security level? Like how mm -hmm. quickly is this just gonna like spin ball out to the rest of the universe and I'm never gonna be able to control it? So the fact that you've already built in those security measures is huge. Yeah, and that came about because we had Patreon people, authors that were setting up Patreons, and that was exactly the problem. They could. You could give out a download link that just said, here, go download this book. You know, if you were doing, if you were an author that was, um, that, you know, every time you put out a new book, if you follow me on, if you, at this reward level on Patreon, you basically get every book that I publish. And I, I know a lot of authors that do that. They follow me at the five or the $10 level. Then you just get everything I publish as soon as it comes out. Many times, weeks in advance. That's probably one of the, the, the coolest things and, and the best way to get if you're really looking to build up a Patreon or any kind of membership service like that, you give them something that they don't get anywhere else. It's, it's either going to be exclusive content. So we have authors that give out exclusive short stories that only go out to their patrons. And then we have authors who they don't necessarily do exclusive content, but you do get it two or three weeks before everybody else gets it. So it's almost like building your own little pre-order. If you come and you follow me and you're, you're, you're following me as a patron, you get this stuff early. But they have the same problem. If I send out this link that's just for people to download, well, I can give that to you and you can give that to somebody else and they can give it to somebody else. And then suddenly this brand, my brand new book that hasn't even been released yet is shared far and wide. And so we built in that Patreon support so that we could verify that, oh yeah, no, they, they are definitely following you as a gold level patron. So let them have their one copy of the book. So you mentioned authors selling direct. Is that the way they do it? Is through their Patreon or is there another module through book funnel where authors sell direct? So we do have authors that use Patreon as like a, a sales platform. Lindsay Baroker is a, is a science fiction fantasy author and her Patreon right. is set up that way. She's, she's basically pre-selling the book and if you follow her at the, so, so Patreon has two models. You can either charge people by the month or you can charge people by the work. And she does the by the work model. So basically if you follow her at $5 per work, then every time she puts out a book, you get your copy two to three weeks early because that's when she releases them. She releases them to her patrons a few weeks before. What's cool about that is number one, she has, I mean, as an author, she basically has a list of people who have said, I will pay you $5 for everything you write. I don't even care what it is. I'll pay you $5 sight unseen. Those are super fans. Those are people yeah. who absolutely want every book that you publish. The second thing is she releases her new books into Kindle Unlimited. And usually about a year later, she rolls everything out wide. 
But initially, when she releases new books, they go into Kindle Unlimited. But until the day that they get released in Amazon, she still does what she wants with them. So she can send them out two weeks before they're published to anyone and everyone that she wants. And it doesn't matter that they're in KU because she has built up a very wide readership on those other platforms. And so her readers would get upset with her that, you know, they had read a lot of her books on Kobo and now she's releasing her new books into Kindle Unlimited. This was one of her ways to say, hey, listen, if you're following me on Patreon, you're paying the same five bucks that you would when the book, the book gets published for $4.99. You're paying the same five bucks. You get it two weeks before everybody else. And it doesn't matter what your reader is. You can read them on everything. The book funnel will get them to every reader known to me. And cannibalize their rankings. It does, but I mean, it, first of all, how many people are going to actually do that? How many readers are you actually talking about? I haven't looked at Lindsay's. I haven't looked at the number of patrons that are following her. I know that she has. She now makes several thousand dollars every time she publishes a book just by mashing a button. Um, but, you know, I always tell people, look, if you have enough people that will buy directly from you that it's actually going to move the needle on your rank, that's probably a good problem to have. If you have fans that love you that much that they're willing to buy your books before they're even published, then yeah, you'll take a little hit in the ranks, but the likelihood that it's really going to hit you hard is pretty low unless you have, I mean, unless you just like, your fans are so amazing, but even then, why not let them give you your money? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, you know, what's more important, making the dollar directly from the people who love you and your work and want to give you the money, not some other company that, you know, cannibalizes it or your author rank, you know, because the people who are paying you directly, they're not going to find you on Amazon. They've already found you. I mean, if you're and doing people well, who find you on Amazon, they will find you through the Patreon and then start paying you direct anyway. So. And to, so, so back to Julia. Oh, go ahead, Julia. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think she was trying to solve a problem. Like you said, she had readership on Kobo or other, mm -hmm maybe Nook or whoever right before, because she's been around a very long time. So she yeah. is serving those supporters, right? Her readers first. Um, I think that's not really going to affect her rank that much on Amazon. Yeah. Because she's yeah. Not getting new readers in KU, right? Don't so. worry about Lindsay. She's doing fine. <laughs> yeah. Right? Also, she's got, she's got 334 patrons there right now, which means I mean, that's a drop in the bucket compared to the sales that she usually gets on your release. <laughs> I think that that's not a problem for her. So back to Julia's question, you, so we do have some authors like Lindsay who are basically using Patreon as a sales platform, but BookFunnel actually has a, a, a direct sales integration with five other platforms. So the, the way that we built our sales, our direct sales was we didn't want to build the ability to sell through BookFunnel because that problem had already been solved. There were already the Shopify's and the cells and the PayPal's of the world that had done all of this work. And my fear was they like, okay, well, we'll build our own sales. And then people would go, well, what about a shopping cart? And I go, okay, so we, we built a shopping cart. And they were like, well, what about forgotten shopping cart emails? And you go, Suddenly you're basically reinventing <laughs> Shopify. And, and Shopify is the second largest seller in the world after Amazon. Like they, they do a fine job of selling stuff. The part that was missing was once you sold that thing, how do you deliver the ebook? Well, that was the part that we're really good at. So we built that piece. So you can take your Shopify store, you can take, you can build a WooCommerce. WooCommerce is a WordPress plugin. So if you wanted to build your own store on your own domain, you can build all of that. And what's beautiful is that you do the selling, we do the delivery. And the nice I was going to say, you're the delivery guys of the book world. Exactly. And, and the nice thing, and the reason that we wanted to do that was number one, I am an indie author. I don't want a cut of your sales. I don't think that the guy who delivers the book actually deserves 30% of the book that you wrote. It's it's not that hard to give people an ebook file. I mean, you know, I, I still have to, I still have support people that we pay and that sort of stuff, but it's certainly not to me worth 30% of every one of your sales. And so the way that we built our sales is you do the selling, we handle the delivery piece and it's all included in the account that you're already paying for. So if you already have a book funnel account and you're using us for your newsletters and you're using us for audio freebies or whatever else, then adding direct sales doesn't cost you anything extra. We don't, we don't take an extra cut of that. So everything that you sell, you take all the profit from that. And when you're talking about, you know, uh, a lot of the authors that are using direct sales, they're not necessarily selling every single book in their entire catalog. What they're doing is they're taking, 
older books, older box sets, and they 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 box these books up in a way that they've never sold them before. So they take an eight book series and they box the whole thing up and they say, listen, I, I don't sell this box set anywhere on the stores. You can only get it directly from me at this really nice discount. But the cool thing is, is that you go off and sell a box set for $30 on a $30 sale, you will take $29 of the profit. It's, I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's awesome. And then again, like we're just going to step in and handle the delivery piece of it. That's the part that we're really good at. And I try not to get in the way of the rest of that stuff. All right. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to ask Kevin about something he's excited about using Book Funnel for. Um, but first, we're going to have Kayleen do a read for our book spotlight and actually it'll show us a little Book Funnel in action, too. <laughs> All right. Yay. So this week's book spotlight is on Zero to Sixty author One Road to Writing Success by Kevin McLaughlin. This book <laughs> is the one I wish I'd had in my early writing years. It's chock full of information I'd wish I'd had, warnings about pitfalls I wish I'd avoided, tips I really could have used, and strategies for building a writing career which have been proven effective over and over for author after author. There's no one true way to success as a writer, but this is one way which has worked very well for a multitude of authors. Here, you'll get a step-by-step -step rundown of every critical component for building your own author business and reaching rapid financial success with your books. Here, you'll learn choosing a market that will work for you, the Venn diagram that will help you live a happy and successful writing life, easy and effective ways to gain visibility for your books, why quality and quantity of writing might not be related in the way you think, and much more. Get your copy for free by clicking the link and see it in the show notes of Doom. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, for uh, offering this book up, for writing it, for putting it out for the readers, and giving it away for free. Use it. Nope. Book <laughs> well, glad to. I figured it was a, a really appropriate thing to, to try since we're talking about book funnel today, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So live action. How does book funnel work on the reader's end? Click that link and find out today. That's right. Uh, yes, you can experiment with book funnel and see it in action. Um, so Kevin, I was really impressed by your website. You've got a blog going. You've got um, lots of Free books for authors. You've got a lot of great information. What are you excited about with Book Funnel? How can, in your mind, how would you use Book Funnel? Well, that's kind of answered. But what what other options are you excited about using Book Funnel for? So, um, right now, the biggest thing that I use Book Funnel for is for email list building. Um, between putting my, I, I use usually free short stories as a as a lead as a lead magnet, and um, I put those up on Book Funnel and then I advertise them. But Book Funnel also has these really great uh, uh, group promotions that they that they host, um, where one person sets up a group promotion and then uh, Book Funnel sends me an email saying, "Oh, we've got two new or five new or you know however many new today today <laughs> uh, promotions." And it's always I'm constantly getting these emails, which is awesome. So by joining a couple of those a month. Uh, you can easily pick up a couple hundred new email subscribers a month that way, just by you know continuously working at it, continuously um, joining a couple of different promotions and with your with your book. So that's one of the primary ways and the best things I like about Book Funnel in terms of stuff I want to do. I'm crazy interested in getting into in into using audio snippets or potentially even audiobook direct sales. You know, even if they're for even if it's a short work, you know, um, being able to do an audiobook direct sale, can we do that yet, Damon? <laughs> you, can, you can. So you can do. Uh, we actually have authors that are doing short form audio fiction sales. So they're selling like novella length audio directly from their site. Which I will say, there's really not much of a market for short audio fiction like on Audible because most of the Audible market only uses their credits to buy things. And they're always looking for what is the best bargain that I can get. So on Audible, you pay 15 bucks a month, 14.95, what, 15 bucks. You pay 15 bucks uh, and, and then you from that, you get one credit. And that one credit will get you a two hour novella 
or an 80 hour fantasy extravaganza. Um, yeah, right. most everybody is looking to spend it on that 80 hour thing, right? Because I'm paying the same either way. So there, there weren't a lot of readers who, the authors just weren't putting short fiction up because it wasn't worth it. People aren't gonna pick it up. Now we see authors that are actually doing direct sales, again, doing the sales and then we handle the delivery of it. And you're able to do that with the short form audio, hopefully and, and soon with full, with full audio books. That would be really cool with the full audio book. Since I spent like the last year working on learning how to do my own audio. Okay. And, you know, like, so for instance, you know, that, that, that book that uh, people are hopefully downloading from book phone right now um, is probably short enough to fall under about the two hour limit. So I could just record that one, put it up there and sell it for five bucks or whatever, you know, as the audio and have just, just one more channel, one more way of reaching people, one more, um, way of, of putting stuff out there. So my, my, my quick question, cause I know there's probably a lot of people out there. It's like, but how do I do that? Um, you know, you're directly selling from your website, you know, using book funnel as the delivery guy, you know, how, as the author, are we like gaining, you know, this direct sale money? Do you, okay. Like, what, okay, or, so, you know, no, go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, I was rambling at that point. No. So you have, so we have five platforms that we integrate with. The most popular one is WooCommerce, which is a WordPress plugin. So authors who already, most authors are, are built on a WordPress website. And so, you know, adding another plugin is just installing a plugin and you're ready to go. You can build your bookstore right there on your own, your own website. And the way that works is, you know, with WooCommerce, you set up who you're going to use to collect the money. So you can set up PayPal, you can set up Stripe, which Stripe is just, they just take credit cards online. It's, it's, but like I said, the cool thing is that problem, like how to take money from people and transfer it to your account, that problem's been solved for a decade and, and they've solved it in really, really elegant ways. So you, you've set up your store, you've set up an item, not even a store, you just have one item, you know, you put it up there on your WooCommerce on your site, the, they go, you send them the link, they click through to that page, they make their purchase. WooCommerce handles all of the sales and uh, the transactions and reporting and all that stuff. And then when the sale is made, they ping back to BookFunnel through an integration that tells BookFunnel, hey, a sale was made, here's the item that I sold. And BookFunnel says, oh, that item, that means I'm supposed to deliver this ebook to them. And we send them an email that says, hey, here's that ebook that you just purchased. The cool thing about that is that we don't actually care what that thing you sold was. So you, you tell BookFunnel, when I sell this item, deliver this ebook. But I don't care what this is. We have authors that do, um, they sell coffee mugs and t-shirts and all kinds of swag. And they give away free short stories when you buy any of their swag. As soon as they buy the t-shirt, we deliver the short story. Uh, we have authors that pre-sell signed paperbacks of their books. So they actually do like really like custom little, little signed paperback editions that they only sell to their true fans. But what's funny was that uh, readers would get those books and then they wouldn't read them because this is their collector's you edition. Break, you can't break the seal. Man. And they don't want to break the spine. You can't so break now, the spine. Yeah, so now what they're doing is I can sell you for the same price. I'm selling you this, this beautiful, you know, signed print copy. And at the same day that you buy it, while you're waiting for that to be shipped in the mail, boom, e Book Funnel delivers the ebook right to your mailbox. So you can start reading it immediately while you're waiting for your beautiful collector's edition to show up in the mail. That's a nice one. That's I like awesome. that idea a lot. And you, and again, because you, if, if uh, the authors that I've seen that are doing that, they're pre-selling it. So it's a special thing that they're doing two weeks before they publish it everywhere else. So not only do you get a signed collector's copy, you get to read the book two weeks before everybody else gets it. And it is so fast. I've gotten, I've gotten quite a few eBooks, you know, through book funnel and it's really fast. It's like you click the thing, you click your way and, Bam, you're reading. Bam. Oh, it's excellent. Yeah, I really, I, I love how it just drops it. I, I usually use my phone for it, and I drop mm -hmm. it right into my Kindle app. It works yeah. great. Now, uh, Julia, in between lawyering today, kid wrangling, and teaching, and all that stuff, you wrote a bunch of questions for Damon. You got them prepared. Are there any yeah, questions? Yeah, I actually went on the Book Funnel blog, and I saw that they were integrating with Sendy. I mean, they, the engineering department, all of Damon. Yes, the engineering on. department. Yes. So yeah. I was curious, are you seeing a lot of authors adopt Sendy? 
Uh, yeah, so Sydney was one of our most requested, and it was um, so the if you're just kind of starting out as an author and you're just starting to build your newsletter, you know the Mailchimp's and the Manor Lights of the world will give you a thousand or two thousand subscribers free, which is fantastic. Um, but Mailchimp, you know, once you tip over to two thousand and one, it goes from zero dollars to like twenty five dollars a month. It's it's a really big leap, um, especially when you're still. I mean, at two thousand readers you're still pretty low. You're still kind of slowly building up that newsletter. And I don't know. My feeling is my personal feeling is that it's, there's a lot of the indie spirit where people just get like, I could just do this myself. Like, this is ridiculous. I'm paying, you know, 25 bucks a month. I could, it's just some other than sending emails. I could do this. And Sendy is a, is more of a DIY kind of platform. So it's a piece of software that you buy, and I think it's sixty nine dollars right now. Maybe they even they may even have a, a special viral sale going on. They uh, and but once you buy a copy, you buy you pay for the software once. You host it on a machine somewhere, which usually runs you a couple of bucks a month. But then the beauty of it is that you don't pay. You're not paying a service to host for you. You're running it on your own little hosting, your own little um, virtual machine. And you can add as many readers as you possibly want, and your your money never goes up. The only time that you have to spend money is when you email them. So you're you're paying the by email cost, which um, Cindy uses Amazon SES, which is simple email service. Amazon's real clever with their naming stuff. Um, and their their SES is basically ten cents per thousand emails that you send. So if you've got a list of ten thousand people. You're gonna pay a dollar every time that you want to send out an email. So if you're sending out, if, if you're if you're a diligent author and you're sending out two a month, that's two bucks. Two bucks. That's not bad at all. Yeah, on top of the hosting fee, which it, you can generally get for five dollars or less per month. And if you if you pay by the year, you can even shrink that down even further. They'll give you discounts. So uh, Cindy was a is one that we got a lot of requests for because a lot of authors were really just sort of, they had reached that point where either they had, they either already had 2,000, some of them, I mean, at 2,000, like I said, MailChimp's 25 bucks. If you get up to, I don't even want to ask Kevin what his bill is, but once you get up to 15,000, I think MailChimp is over 150 bucks a month. A month! That's, That's That's a tremendous amount of money to, and especially if you're not sending a lot of emails. If you're emailing all the time, then managing sending out those emails can be, you know, it could be a hassle. And maybe you want to look at, okay, maybe it's worth it to let Manor Light just do that crap for me. But if you're sending out one email a month, $150 to send out one email every month, that's a lot. So yeah, Cindy, and then the at the same time we announced Cindy, we also announced uh, SendFox, which is a, a new player on the market, but they're built by KingSumo and AppSumo, which is a big company, mm. but this is their new entry into the mailing list market, and it's very, very bare bones, um, it, but you build the list, and you send it out, and the nice thing is the way that they've set theirs up is it's a lifetime deal, so for $49, mm. you can have up to 5,000 subscribers, and all you pay is that $49. That's it. You'll never pay them again. And you can have up to 5,000 subscribers and send them emails till the end of time and you don't get charged. But what's cool is you can stack those $50 offers. So if you buy five of them, you can now have a max of 25,000 subscribers and you'll never pay them again. So we integrated with SendFox and Sendy because we had a lot of authors that were reaching out and saying, man, I really love using BookFunnel to build my mailing list. I've been doing group promos. I've got 3,000 people on my list through BookFunnel group promos. But now I'm paying 30 bucks a month to MailChimp to manage all this stuff. I've been looking at this Cindy thing, and I think I want to try that. <laughs> and so that we built, we integrated with those two. That was, I think we announced that three or four weeks ago. And we did that because we wanted to help the authors who were trying to save a little money, right? We're all trying to do that. Right. Good now, yeah. Rob Alarda asks, what things are BookFunnel looking to do in 2020? Or 2021 when all the stupid ends. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's funny is is like that has been a that has been a question. So my wife Julie runs the company, and between the two of us, that really has kind of been a question. We have several features that we have held on to because it's like, well, do we release a new feature now when the world's kind of upside down? Is is that just going to get lost in the noise? And it feels a little 
I don't know. Everybody, I mean, I know my family, we're all nervous. We're all kind of just looking and watching the news and hoping that everybody's okay. And so it feels kind of crappy to be like, hey, everybody, we got new features. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Um, so, you know, but we're trying to be reasonable about it. So we have a few features that we are holding on to. Please, hopefully, God, not till 2021. Um, the biggest thing that we are um, that we are working on now that, that we're hoping to have in beta in the next month or so is full audiobooks. So Book Funnel, right now we do audio up to two hours, which is great. And you can do a lot of powerful things with that. But, I mean, it doesn't change the fact that since day one, people have been asking us to deliver audiobooks. And so that's the next big feature that we're going to announce. Hopefully, we'll have it in beta before the summer, and it will be. Uh, I'm hoping to have it out of beta before the end of the summer. And then, uh, what were the other big ones? Well, we just released a new app for iOS and Android, uh, which is a, a massive departure from everything that we've done before. We, we've had an Android app for four years, but it really was. It, it could barely be called an app. It really was just a download. All it did was take the file from the servers and put it into the app that you wanted to read in, like your Kindle app or your Nook app or, or whichever reading app you wanted to use. And it, it, it's, it does a great job at just doing that. Um, but BookFunnel users have, um, ever since about a year ago, they have what we call the BookFunnel library. So if you go to mybookfunnel.com and you log in, all the books you ever received through BookFunnel are there in your library so that you can download another copy. And we built that. We, we are absolutely an author platform, meaning that we, we love our readers, but we always go for our authors first. And so if we are ever looking at a question of, is this the right decision for authors or for readers, we will always take the path that is right for our authors, and even if that might end up necessarily not making readers happy. But we did have some cases where um, readers would... <laughs> I mean, we would get emails from people where a reader had dropped their Kindle in the toilet and now they can't get their books back. And so we would say, oh, well, here, we can help you get a few of those back because we can look through and we can see the books that you've done. But over time, we realized that that readers needed a way to be able to track and keep the books that they had gotten from BookFunnel. And just like the, they had purchased, that was something we really built when we built direct sales. Our feeling was if a reader buys a book, they have the right to get that book again on a new device. If they come in with a new Kindle or they get a new phone, they want to be able to download it again. So we didn't feel that it was right to say, well, I mean, you already got that book. You don't get it again. So we built a library for that. And now our new iOS and Android apps let people manage their libraries and do the same thing. They can still download. If you're, if you're reading it on your iPad, you can tap a book and you can download it and send it to the Kindle app. Or you can read it right in the book phone app. We built our own e-reader into it so that readers could just read right directly in the app for the, what they want to do. Okay, that's really cool. That's a great yeah, feature. That's a lot of versatility in there. It's really cool, and I will say something I'm really proud of, because I built the entire ebook reader from scratch. Nice. Wow. We just all just like clap right now for all the techno grunts out there. Sorry, Frisbee, <laughs> I have to use it, because if you're building crap from scratch out of numbers and letters and all the things, yeah. Yeah, you guys are like the definition of that scrappy startup. You know, you're taking on Amazon, you're taking on Audible in a way, you know, yeah. not, not taking their spaces, but you're giving authors the ability to kind of control their distribution, whether it's ebook or whether it's audio. And those are big players that you're kind of going up against. And that has always been what we, I, I've always said, and if you look at our website, we, I, I can't remember what ours. But we, we the, the point of Book Funnel, it started off as just ebook delivery, but really what we're always, and, and almost everything we build revolves around that core feature of, of the, the delivering of ebooks. So direct sales and, and print codes and certified mail and all these features that we built, they all ultimately boil down to that, that core thing that we, we built in the beginning, which is how to get a book to any device that a reader might be on. And I mean, we see crazy devices. We see devices you've never heard of. We, you know, they've got Toledo in Germany. They've got their own e-readers. We send books to those. Uh, we still get people on Blackberries that email us oh and we God. deliver books to Black. Oh yeah, we still do. We have, like people on reading on Chromebooks. We do all kinds of stuff. Uh, so, and and that's what I always tell people. Like you have no idea if you wanted to do this yourself, you can't even imagine what readers are reading on. There. There's there's all kinds of crazy stuff that they're doing. So all the features that we built ultimately fall back to that core experience of getting the book to the reader's device where they want to read it. 
And if they have a problem, our support team is there to step in and instantly help them get their book where they want to go. But our goal is always to build tools that make authors' lives easier, that empower indie authors to go out there and be indie. Do what you want. Take your stories. Take your books. Sell them yourself. Give them away. Do whatever you want to do with them. I don't care. I think it's amazing. I love watching what indies take my the things that I've built and do with them. Uh, audiobooks is one of those perfect examples of the feature. Like We always say that we build the feature for X and Y, and within a week, everybody's doing Z. Because we don't, we, we don't even know what indies are going to take the tools that we built and what they're actually going to go do with it. And we start watching, we go, they did what? That's a great <laughs> idea. Why didn't we think of that? You know? That's what you get for working with indies. Now, Guy Anthony DeMarco, he says, looking at the prices on Book Funnel, it'd be expensive for me and two, 10 pseudonyms, $250 for three author names per month. You would probably, Guy, you would probably want to look at our publisher plan. So if you look at the pricing page, you go down to the bottom, there's a link for publishers. Um, you can get a publisher plan for $30 a month that will take you up to 10 pen names. All right, wow. pen name authors. You're look hearing it now. Don't do individual authors. Do what he just said. Yeah, and we, yeah and we, do have, we, we have a lot of publishers. And, and if, if you are an author that has a lot of pen names and pseudonyms like that, then you want to look at those publisher plans. If you're trying to do it on our author plans, first of all, it's going to be a real pain because you're going to have to sign up for multiple plans and you're going to have to log into each of them separately, which you don't actually have to do. If you really want, if you really wanted to buy three bestseller plans, contact us and we'll just merge them to get, we'll charge you for three plans, but we'll merge them together in one account. But really, if you're, if you've got that many pen names, you want to look at our publisher plans. Now, Kevin, Julia, you know, Damon, questions? I, I just had one last question, which sure. um, you had talked about print codes. And as Walt pointed out, you know, we're not going to be in a pandemic forever. Someday we're going to be able to like go to conferences again and see people. Can you talk about how print codes can help us? Yeah, sure. So print codes was uh, is another one of those features that we built because we had half a dozen or more authors contact us all with the same basic concept, which was, I want to be able to, to sell or give away copies of my book in live and in person. Uh, I think this was actually two two years ago before RWA, before, before everything happened, uh, before they imploded. And so they were everybody was going to right. RWA, and they, they wanted to be able to take their books, their eBooks, with them. And so they said, you know, can BookFunnel do this? Because you you could put a, a download page link on a, on a business card or something like that, but every single person is going to get the same link. So if I hand you a link. Once again, you could share it with anybody else. You could give it to it, – it could just be shared far and wide, and a bunch of people that you didn't intend to get your book are now getting your book. That's not so bad if you're giving out a free short story that you're basically like, I don't care who reads it. Everybody can have it. But if you were trying to sell books in person, that's not going to work very well. So we built print codes, and print codes are really simply – individual unique codes that you can build against a book. So you can create a batch of 100 or 300 or 500, and then we generate all these little codes for you. You go and print them or don't print them. You can actually send them out by email. You can do anything you want to do with them. We call them print codes because that's what we designed them for. But then you can go and put those on the back of your business card. You can put those on a bookmark. You can put those on a postcard. Then you can take them to conferences. You can take them to uh, in-person readings. Um, you can just carry, I have authors that, when I go to conferences, I have authors that come with me and will hand me their business card and make a point to turn it over and show me a book funnel code on the back. And they hand those out. The nice thing is each one of those little codes is a unique code. And once it's been redeemed, that's it. It disappears. It can't be used again. So that reader gets their copy of the book, but they can't then share that link, that code with anybody else. It's gone. And then what's also cool is, you can, if once they put in that code, they also have the option right there to sign up for your newsletter and join at the same time that they're getting your book. And what's neat is when you meet somebody in person like that, there's a much bigger connection than if you just kind of put a free book out there and said, hey, everybody, here's a free book. Everybody have it, right? You'll get thousands of downloads, but you may not get thousands of readers. Um, when you meet somebody in person, you say, hey, you know what? You know, you start talking about the books that you like. Um, I have a T-shirt that I wear that my wife – so my wife makes makes my geeky T-shirts because I can't ever find the ones that I like. But I have one that is solid black, but it has a really dark gray outline of Serenity, the, the, the ship from Firefly. 
And uh, I call it my geek Rorschach test because if you look at that and you know what that is, <laughs> then you're my you're my people, right? And so I went to a uh, I went to a birthday the test. Yeah, I went to a birthday party for my little girl, and I was standing there, and we were watching. And she's five. We're watching the, the kids all play, and this guy's standing next to me, and he's watching his little girl play, and he kind of just leans over and he goes, "Is that Serenity?" And I go, "Yeah." And then we started talking about Dune and the Harkonnens and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, "Oh crap, you're really my people now." And wow. when you meet and you meet somebody like that, and you're able to say, "Hey, you know what?" I think you'd really like my book. I want to give you here. Here's a copy of the first book of this of my trilogy. That person is almost for sure going to go home and check out your book right. in a way that people that download a bunch of free copies are not. And so, uh, I, I print codes is one of those features that the authors who use it use it a lot, but not as many book funnel authors know what it is or what it can do for them. So, it's still right. one of my favorite features, though. So I do want to ask, um, when when you get those, do they ever expire? Because I know there's probably some people out there that are thinking, if I get 50 of these things, but I'm a homebody, I don't meet 50 people, um, either online or offline, do they ever expire? So you can set them to an expiration date of up to two years out. Um, so you can create. So you create them by the batch. You can say, I want to create 500 codes. I want to create just 50. I'm going to go to a conference. I want to create 50 codes. And I want them to expire six months from the day of the conference so that everybody's got six months. To, and after that, if you haven't gotten it, you no, know, they're, not, they're not out there forever and ever. Amen. Um, you can set those up. We can actually set the expirations up to five years out if wow. you ask a, a book funnel to do it. We don't do that by default because most people don't need that. But we do have publishers that have – they go and they print 10,000 of these cards – at once, right. and then they use those same cards. They take them to all the conferences for the next two years, and so they've reached out to us, and we can set the expiration out long in advance. But yes, they do. You can set the expiration dates on all those codes, and as soon as they hit, then that's it. Those codes are gone. Does each of those cards have a unique link to it, though? Like a different unique link? No, time? they go to a little site. They, so we actually have um, we actually have templates that you can use to print on a business card size or a postcard size that tells you that you can fill in all the information. But it says go visit getmybook.com and type in this little code. And if you go look at that, it's a really simple little website that just has a big banner right in the middle where they type their little code in, and then it redeems their code. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so we are a little bit over. Um, oh. I don't know if any is last minute questions. A card for you, one for you, another for you. <laughs> no, card for you. You're weird. One for you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Kevin, Julia, Damon. Did I say that right, Damon? Yes, Damon. Ah, right. Only been talking to you for freaking hour. Um, <laughs> for coming on the show, talking with us, telling all of the ins and outs of Book Funnel. Honestly, I did not realize that it could be so ingenuitive. I mean, there's really a lot that you can do with it. If you if you can imagine it, do it. Contact Book Funnel. I mean, by the sounds of it, six to twelve people, and they're gonna freaking look into it because they are here for us authors. They want us to get whatever work we have digitally out to the people we yep. want to get it to the people we want to get it to our readers plus damon's uh, the kind YouTube of guy who, who was a oh, i was gonna say plus damon's just the kind of guy who who says oh that's really cool let's do that <laughs> yeah i know he's super excited and okay so i've been thinking this for the last like 45 minutes he is like the male version please forgive thanks, me walt. hopefully you laugh what i said thanks walt he was saying he's been a member for a year oh there you go uh, you're like the male version of Flo from from the progressive stuff. She's so excitable, and she I loves her job excitable. so much. And you're like the bulk funnel version of Flo, and I just I love that. I think it's fantastic. Um, and for those of you who don't know, he's like a literal giant. So he's not just a giant among men. He's like six foot a thousand. When you meet him in person. I know. Yeah, you can't you can't hardly see it sitting in this chair. But I, I am six foot four and, and and a pretty big guy. So. Oh my goodness! I did not. Get that. All right. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna start. Oh, no, I'm gonna start from here, and then I'm gonna go down. Damon, I'm gonna go back to Julia. Where can our viewers, listeners, podcast peoples find you and your work? Totally not stalkery. Go, Kevin. Oh me? Ah. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Kevin O. McLaughlin 
com, and uh, there's a, a, a cool link to a free short story, which is happens to be uh, hosted by <laughs> by Book Funnel <laughs> right on the main page there. Um, most of my books are in Kindle Unlimited, and uh, you know you can definitely find all of my stuff on Amazon too. All right, and as Walt has said, I bet most folks can find Damon on Book Funnel. Well, I bet they can, but where else can they find you, Damon? Bookfunnel.com. That's a it's it's a easy easy to remember. And if you have any questions, you can email me, Damon at Bookfunnel.com. We don't get clever. All right, so it literally really is that you find him on Book Funnel. He is the funnel. Yeah, of the I book. am. That's what I, this, this is Book Funnel. I'm in the Book Funnel world headquarters right now. You can. It's, <laughs> that's it. That's that's the secret lair. It's awesome. I used to work out. I used to. At my, at, we sold the last house, but I used to have a, an office in the backyard that we called the Book Funnel World headquarters because it was just <laughs> me in this little nine by nine shred, you know, building Book Funnel. That's awesome. All right, Julia. Hit us with it. So juliav.com. That's J-U-L-I-A-V-E-E.com. And just like Kevin, I also have a free novella magnet hosted on a book funnel. It's called Cold Justice. And it's for military sci-fi fans. And now that Damon has taught us how to use audio, I'm going to put up a short that the fantastic Luke Daniels narrated for me and for Ken Bebel. Luke is amazing. He does all of Richard Fox's books and I'm sure you know, he's like super talented with accents. We have a four hour um, novella that he did for us. So I'm trying to figure out, maybe I could deliver it on uh, two different um, snippets or I can just wait until Book Funnel does the whole book. <laughs> you know, or you could just, you know, give people a snippet now and then be like, well, you know, you could you could wait or get it now because people will definitely click on it. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, to everyone in the live chat, YouTube viewers, podcast listeners, thank you for hanging out with us. Let us know what you thought about the show in the comments. Uh, show your support with thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Ding the little <laughs> bell. There's so many things that you have to ding, click, and whatnot to get the alerts. But be alerted because we're, I mean, we think, we have good stuff and we want to give all the good stuff to you for Lauren Moore. I'm Kayleen Williams. Thank you for joining us on your writer's journey. We'll see you next time. Let's talk about more reading, writing and everything in between right here on keystroke medium. Good.